My name's Luben Hinid, and I make paintings, basically. Some of the time the paintings are on found objects, sometimes on canvas, sometimes on paper. But I describe myself as a painter, really. This show, A Fine Toothed Comb, at home in Manchester, came about because Clarissa Korff, the curator there, asked me to do a project with her. And I didn't want to make uh, a show that was just my work. I wanted to make a show that was about the conversations I have when I'm making work and the conversations I have in the studios I work in with artists that I know very well. I wanted us to make a, an exhibition that is in a sense a comment on an investigation of Manchester. And I knew that because all four of us make work in very, very different ways, we would come at it in quite extraordinarily different angles. So I knew that this would, well, I'm hoping, but I'm pretty certain that this would be exciting for audiences. So that when you come to the show, in a sense, you haven't left Manchester behind when you come into the room. Manchester's in the room with you. I have made work that kind of plays with the idea of that very serious state that many people in Manchester find themselves in, where they are not quite certain whether next week they're going to have somewhere to live. So it's that precarious state of homelessness on the horizon. I often make work about situations that frighten me, and that, I think, is one of the most frightening contemporary states that people can be in, is that knowing that just at the t on the turn of, what we used to call on the turn of a sixpence, your ho whole life could unravel, and how you have to be very astute about everything really, about money of course, but about space and place and people. You have to be more careful. In my practice, I'm concerned with listening, with sound. I work in with uh, sound, moving image, but also I make prints on paper, which are combining screen printing and painting as well. In the exhibition uh, Fine Tooth Comb at home, I'm going to present a piece um, titled um, Music and Silence. It's a four-channel video installation with four-channel sound. It will be sort of working like two diptychs. They try to pair two different places, two different cities and two different buildings. So on one side we will see Manchester Central Library. When I was audio recording and filming the library, I was interested in how the architecture affects the way how we behave in that space. So Manchester Central Library reading room is under the dome. So all the subtle sounds are amplified. And in a way, the way how we behaving in that space, we self-control our behavior to be quieter. But at the same time, every subtle sounds are magnified and turning the sort of silent reader into performer. In this, I'm interested in sort of this sort of private moment in the public space as well. So it's public space, but we're sharing the experience of reading in that location. Within um, the building which is paired with its music school in uh, Wuch, in this footage we've got a cellist rehearsing. So again, both of those women are affected by the architecture of the space. They're still sort of experiencing very private moments. So one is reading, one is rehearsing music. And I would say that that hopefully the viewer will be able to immerse themselves in that, those two spaces themselves and have sort of the privilege to experience their experience in a way. Generally, I work across drawing, printmaking and installation. I'm kind of working specifically around ideas of landscape and the walking artist within that landscape. 
My practice has actually changed quite a lot, over, especially over lockdown. So I was using a lot of technology, a lot of digital tools before lockdown. And then because I no longer had access to that during lockdown, I started a project called Porosity. Uh, and I began having conversations with two women who I was collaborating with at the start of the project, uh, Deborah Bell and Rosalind Todd Hunter. Each of us had a very unique way of engaging and kind of thinking about moving through a landscape. So Deb is a water dowser and Rosalind is a retired geologist. So we each had a different way of kind of decoding the landscape and sensing the landscape while we moved through it. For this installation, Serge, it means kind of uprising or to, to spring. So I, I wanted to take elements from porosity, you know, this idea of walking body receiving energy, and see if it translated into an urban environment, especially Manchester, which has already got lots of very visible water, you know, two big rivers running through it, lots of culverts. I really wanted to kind of get audiences to think about what was even further below that. So what if there's anything in the bedrock, you know, what magnetic fields or energies are, are kind of coming from the geology of Manchester. So Deb and I did a week's dowsing across Manchester. And we remapped uh, Manchester based on those spring lines. And we found qu quite a number actually running at over 100 metres below ground. So once we'd done those and we'd remapped that and we had kind of this flow going through, actually going through the centre of home as well, that we found this spring that was kind of going right through the centre of home, which was, which was quite helpful. I then have a process of trying to interpret those ideas about that energy that, that you kind of detect through those processes. And I start with a lithographic stone. I kind of paint onto the stone with a, with a greasy kind of drawing ink. So as the ink and the water kind of collaborate with the stone, the water evaporates, you get these really beautiful reticulated lines. So then I was photographing and enlarging sections of, of those drawings, which then informed the wall drawings. So they're sections of kind of energy that has been created through my movement, but in response to dowsing with, with Deborah. My work looks at landscape and the politics of landscape, the economics, history, ecology. Um, that's what I'm interested in looking at. In a fine toothed comb, I'm showing a couple of pieces of work and they sort of communicate with each other. The older work is red, amber, green, and I took a handbook of British birds and using the red amber green UK species list of birds that are under threat I blanked out all the species that are on the amber and red list and about I don't know 30 pages in it became apparent that there was so many birds that are on the amber and red list that actually it was getting a bit depressing so I decided in a way, as an artist, maybe we won't be this bad and in the future we will save some of the species. So instead of blanking all the amber and red ones out, I saved some of the species. And then the new piece, I've made this large scale textile hanging that is showing the complicated line drawing of all the property planning in the area. So at the very beginning of the project, I was wandering around near home and I saw that there was this really lovely derelict plot of land. It's obviously been derelict for a while, there's trees and shrubs and weeds on it. In my mind, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if we uh, try and get permission to go on the plot and maybe we could have a summer of events, like here's what you could do with a plot of land and it turns out that it was owned by the council, Manchester City Council. So we told them our idea and they said, I'm terribly sorry, but we're going to develop it. And it made me kind of think about all land is owned and, of course, ownership of land in a city centre, it's very valuable. So, of course, the economics of that are very powerful. And you can go online and check all the planning application you can put in any date that you want. So I put in sort of for the last five, ten years. And of course, what comes up is this 
complicated line drawing of buildings and properties. Uh, so, of course, overlaying these things, you get this fantastic complicated drawing, and that's essentially what I've made for a fine-toothed comb. I've invited Labena to curate this exhibition using her own work as a starting point. She initially trained as a theatre designer and I think the sense of performativity is palpable in her work. It often features subtle but powerful moments of exchange between people, strong political message or strategies for reconciliation. Her exquisitely painted objects feature faces or patterns used as a language to convey inner dialogue or hidden narratives. And hidden narratives is really what this exhibition is all about, using Manchester as a starting point. The passage of time, things in the city that are slowly changing all around us that we don't immediately notice. Whether it's the plight of communities othered by race or socioeconomic status, people affected by absence and trauma in Labena and Magda's work, the ecological impact of land management or subterranean and geological changes in Rebecca and Tracy's work, they're all political, but these artists express their observations in poetic and subversive ways, highlighting the importance of looking carefully, a hyper-awareness of our environment, honing their intuition and checking in. Home is an art centre bringing together contemporary art, film and theatre connected through a series of social spaces. The art centre movement started in the late 1940s and 50s and marked a radical shift in the provision of access to culture. Post-war austerity, the advent of the Cold War and decolonisation of the British Empire was the context in which the art centre movement was conceived. It was radical and fought against the British art establishment in favour of places for opportunity, places for experimentation, talking, thinking and doing. And this is the sentiment that we'd like to tap into here, bringing multiple perspectives into the programme. I've always been fascinated in the way that artists curate and Lebane has been curating exhibitions for many years. There's a greater sense of freedom and collaboration that I find so exciting here. It changes the way exhibitions are conceived, authored and experienced, and this is a motive in Labena's exhibition. She's been in conversation with these artists for a long time and over the last 10 years has shared a studio with them, and I'm interested in what this does to an artist's practice. In this exhibition, the works don't stand still. Labena's positioned them as though in a dance, circling each other, rubbing up against each other, just like the bustle and the topography of the city.